Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, to no one's surprise, well, maybe some people who have been, you know, under a rock recently have been uh, surprised, but uh, hey, um, there's more leaks. <laughs> Over the weekend, there's some massive leaks, so with all that said, let's jump into them. So, first up, there's Vexing Bobble, not Wayfarer's Bobble, Vexing Bobble. Now, will I love this Bobble as much as, you know, the original Wayfarer's Bobble? Uh, Probably not. I guess it's not like the original Bobble. There's probably Bobbles before it, like Urza's, Mishra's. Anyways, that being said, Vexing Bobble, an artifact for one. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell, pay one and tap, sacrifice Vexing Bobble, draw a card. So very different than Wayfarer's Bobble, but serves an interesting function indeed. Hey, uh, are you playing against a bunch of players out there like casting things for free? Maybe they're suspending cards. Maybe they are, I don't know, just cheating spells. Maybe they have omniscience in play. Whatever they are doing, or just casting, I guess if no man has been to cast it, or are they casting like, is it uh, like an ornithopter? Do you want to counter an ornithopter? There you go. Or Rograk? There you go. Um, yeah, you can counter free things. Uh, this is pretty specific. That being said, yeah, you can sacrifice this draw a card. So sure, like just artifact decks in general that like can tripping artifacts might want to consider this maybe like i mean not eggs necessarily eggs decks typically like like a free benefit for like you know hitting the graveyard then draw a card or like getting your mana back when you sacrifice it drawing a card paying mana to draw cards with eggs decks maybe not be what they want to do but you never know that being said yeah this does have some like it, de it depends it's very situational it's very specific on what it does. Is it going to see a lot of play in Commander? Probably not. But, you know, if you have that one player in your group that plays a lot of really annoying things that are free, maybe against them. Moving on. And I do want to mention again, these are leaks. These are not officially confirmed. And these images that you're seeing right now are custom images that I made myself on MTG.Design, a fantastic website, because, well, it's easier to discuss it this way. And the actual images of the cards I will show at the end of the episode, okay? Including also, I believe, some like other leaks too that are just like reprints too. So keep that in mind. Moving on. Flage? Flage? No idea. Titan of Fire's Fury, a 6 6 Elder Giant for three mana in Boros. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three to any target and you gain three life. And you can escape it for red, red, white, white, exiling five other cards from your graveyard, which again means that it basically comes back from your graveyard. So, this is yet another one of the Elder Giants, apparently. Like, uh, God, what? Ur Uro? Uro, I think, is, is one, right? That's the, that's the Civic one. And then. Ah, make fun of me in the comments below. The Rakdos one. What is that one's name? The discard one. Anyways, this is basically like Lightning Helix, ETB, and Attack. Obviously, it's a low to the ground commander. Again, just three mana. That being said, unless you've got a way to not sacrifice it when it enters the battlefield, then you are going to be out of luck. I mean, technically, there are ways around this, right? Number one, you could utilize, like, um, Torbor Orb essentially. So Torp Orb would shut this down where you don't have to sacrifice your own commander when it ETBs. You also don't get that Lightning Helix trigger though. So keep that in mind. That being said, I mean, obviously you do have some reanimation effects in white too. So you could reanimate it back out of your graveyard instead of escaping it. Or I think a blink effect would probably work as well, right? Wouldn't it? Let me know in the comments below, like ETB, sacrifice on escapes. Like in response to that, you could just like cloud shift it. I think that would work. I believe. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong on that one though. But yeah, I think there are probably ways around this actual sacrificing. That being said, yeah, if you're just escaping, it's really not that big of a deal. You are in red. You've got plenty of wheel effects. So discard your hand, draw seven, those kind of things. You can fill up your graveyard quite quickly. And by doing that, you give yourself a lot of fuel to the fire to be able to bring this back again and again and again. This is one of those commanders that you can kind of skip on commander attacks permanently in a way. As long as you can keep getting it back out of your graveyard by escaping it. So keep that in mind. I mean, you're paying four each time. That being said, obviously, it's better than paying five, then seven, then nine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, when it comes to this kind of a commander, the build around path with it is, I mean, I think, you, I mean, I guess here's the thing. I, I just just mentioned, you know, the blinking effect, which it would still ETB in the dude again and sacrifice it again. So I guess you could just keep doing that, but then you would have to like keep sacrificing it. The, the trigger would keep coming. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, I. I there are Uro fans out there, but again, I'd say there's more like ramping fans out there. 
and drawing fans out there when it comes to like just like lightning helix again and again and again you could take advantage of this with like damage doubling damage tripling effects essentially as well as you know ways to take advantage of life gain ways to get extra combats to get extra attack triggers as well in a 6-6 that's pretty cheap to get out is pretty nice obviously also we shall see how much this one plays uh this one sees play we shall see it's gonna be interesting yeah uh, let me know in the comments below again what other ways you can use and abuse this like again like uh ending the turn effects could do that as well right like sundial the infinite that one so like yeah ways to get out of sacrificing this one okay moving on arena of glory a land cool uh enters the battlefield tap while you control a mountain so good have a mountain tap for a red pay a red and tap and exert it at red red if this man is spent on a creature spell it gains haste to turn uh, and a reminder exert permanent one tap you're gonna tap step interesting that exert is coming back i don't think we've ever seen it on a land let me know if i'm wrong on that in the comments below but i don't think we've ever seen it on a land i maybe i'm missing something obvious but essentially this one isn't like it's not really ramping you when you do that right you are paying red to tap this for red red so you're going up one as if you just tap this for a red that being said when you're exerting it obviously you are kind of losing out on mana next turn because this doesn't untap on your next turn and it is kind of weird that it's like if this man has been a creature spell against haste that turn it's like well okay yeah if it's not a creature it's not getting haste so it doesn't matter but like you're never going to utilize this for that aspect unless you're casting a creature spell so yeah interesting i mean this seems pretty good uh it's kind of like um gosh what's the uh there's a red land uh bandit warlord uh home of the bandit uh, whatever that one is anyways one that basically gives legendary creatures haste very expensive land i believe uh legendary land that taps for a red and can also pay red and tap to give a creature haste until i'm turned something like that um yeah this is pretty good when it comes to being able to grant haste to a creature yeah there's a downside to it where this doesn't untap you know unless you have other like untapped land shenanigans sure but being able to say oh okay cool like i really want to attack with this creature right here yeah i'm i'm willing to actually have this stay tap for a turn yeah being able to give your commander haste that can be obviously very good for again commanders that love combat commanders that maybe have attack triggers commanders that want to get through and hit hard commanders that maybe have activated abilities like garth that have a tap ability so you're like oh okay i need to be able to utilize that right away being able to grant you know haste can be a very 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 powerful thing so interesting and, and again like it does have the potential to come to play untapped like it's hard to argue against cards like this that are in like a mono colored deck if you can afford it if you're not utilizing too many non-basics essentially too because you do want a good amount of basics there but yeah if you've got like 30 mountains it's like okay chances are likely i'm gonna have a mountain essentially when i play this so we'll come and play untapped i'm not gonna be a turn behind with it and then it gives you that flexibility to grant haste which is very nice so yeah i can see this one seeing a good amount of play i mean one two color decks maybe three as well yeah we shall see i mean i guess too with like triomes that kind of stuff too like that does count as mountains as well and say basic mountains so keep that in mind moving on and the one we're going to be doing a quick take on is apparently Kozlek is back so according to the spoilers and i guess i mean leaks i should say and i'm kind of like spoiling a leak previously but if you haven't seen the episode on ulalek check that out uh yeah apparently like a combination of ulamog and Kozlek. but apparently we're getting both ulamog and Kozlek according to other leaks so here you go a 9-9 eldrazi that costs nine mana and i missed something on this we'll talk about that here in a second when you cast this spell the two target players manifest two cards from their hands for each card manifest this way you draw a card and to manifest a card you put on the battlefield face down is a 2-2 creature turn it face up anytime for its mana cost if it's a creature card my apologies but uh i apparently uh forgot to type out the next part of this and i believe it is other colorless creatures you control get plus three plus two so keep that little little fact right there in mind as well essentially an anthem that gives your creatures an additional plus three plus two you are in a colorless deck that doesn't mean that you can't make non-colorless creatures like you have like equipment or you know like artifacts out there that can make like one one soldiers and that kind of stuff too so it's like okay like one one soldiers one one white soldiers you know or like you know two two bears or whatnot you are limited to you know just pumping colorless creatures but obviously the manifested creatures are colorless so with that manifestation your manifested creatures are going to be five fours the opponent that you you know allowed to manifest and you don't have to against this up to two target players you don't have to say hey you can manifest things you just like no it's just me that being said there is a ban benefit for you doing that obviously because you are drawing again two cards for manifesting to yourself and two for that opponent manifesting two cards so there you go uh yeah it's interesting and i think all right, when you cast spell up to two target players manifest two cards you are forcing that manifest i believe for that player so like you are saying you have to manifest two 
Meaning, let's say they have like two cards in their hand that they really want to play that aren't creatures. They're like, they're kind of out of luck. Those are just face down now as 2-2. Two, two. So it can kind of shut players down that way. Or you can kind of like ask the table like, hey, would anyone like this? Would you like to make a deal if I give you this manifest ability? We shall see. It's interesting. So it's like kind of... Well, I mean, there is that card advantage that you get with, like, Kozilek, right? The original Kozilek was like, hey, draw four cards on cast. And then the next Kozilek was like, hey, draw the difference between your hand and seven. And then this one's like, hey, basically draw four again. So, yeah, you do have that card advantage, which is nice. Nine mana is a good amount for a commander. But, again, when you have a commander that is nine mana like this one, you are going to really dedicate yourself heavily into ramp. You're going to have, like, probably 20-plus ramp spells in this deck. So you're going to be ramping quite quickly, ramping quite efficiently again because you're in a colorless deck, and you're going to say, oh, okay, I'll play my commander, I'll draw some cards back, great. I can manifest, you know, whatever in my hand, and now I've got a lot of threats on the board. Again, for 9 mana, you are getting 9 power from this, plus an extra basically 10 power across two other bodies. So 3 bodies total, what, 19 power? The 3 body problem. Go see it on Netflix, <laughs> if, it's, if, if that's up your alley. Anyways, uh, this one is... Interesting, because, yeah, you can go wide with it. You can go, like, yeah, a lot of creatures. Again, with that anthem that I forgot to write on this one. Again, my apologies. Plus three, plus two to your colorless creatures. That is a lot of additional power coming out of your commander. That being said, you could also, of course, like, go Voltron, because your commander is a three-shot KO. Very easily a two-shot KO with just two extra power. And, of course, very easily also a one-shot KO if you're like, oh, Fire Shrieker as well. Double strike, you're done. That being said, um, yeah, the way that I would build around this is trying to use and abuse Manifest because by cheating into play certain cards, again, they're face down as two twos, and sure, you can pay to flip them over, or you could like exile them and you know, blink them or whatever. You know, you can just blink them, they come back into play on their face upside, so you just kind of cheated on their mana cost and kept them, yeah, from uh, from having to cost you mana. But I mean, again, you are ramping a ton too, so you probably have a lot of flexibility with this, and kind of with that extra mana. Being able to potentially like bring this back in your hand and replay it to draw more and also manifest more, you can kind of get in a really, really, really cool loop with this commander where you're like, okay, cool. I'll cheat the things out. I'll blink them. I'll flip them. I've got a lot of power on the board. Oh, okay, look. I'll blink, or blink my commander back to my hand. I'll bounce my commander back to my hand. I'll replay it. I'll get more manifest. I'll get more value. I'll flip those too. You can do a lot of exciting things. Let's talk about some cards that work really well with this one. Again, a reminder that even if you're very excited about this commander, even though I didn't put that one part on the commander, that is also very exciting with the Anthem. <laughs> Make sure you take everything I say with a grain of salt because these cards are leaked. I will put the images at the end of the episode, but they have not been officially confirmed by Wizards to my knowledge. So, if you are excited about this commander and want to build around it, ask your playgroup first and be like, hey, can I proxy this? Is that okay? And if I do, like, and it's not real, can I still keep playing it? Great. If not, yeah, I mean, maybe wait until it's actually officially confirmed and then maybe check out that link in the description below with the cards. With that said, let's jump into it. And again, my apologies for that slight mistake on the card. Uh, I did just go double check. It does say other colorless creatures you control get plus three plus two. So keep that in mind, please. Regardless, also keep in mind Voyager Staff. I love this card. This card gives essentially any color combination or colorless combination. It's not really a combination, but colorless. <laughs> Access to a blink effect. Voyager Staff is a great one. Artifact for one, pay two, sacrifice it. Exile target creature, turn the exile card to battlefield. Undertow's control to begin next end step. A, you know, delayed blink effect, one might say. One that essentially says, hey, um, let's avoid that board wipe too or whatever's going on. But yes, being able to use and abuse an ETB. Speaking of which, Golden Argosi. Yeah, this one is underrated and how well can blink. A 3-6 vehicle with crew, one for four mana. So just kind of funny when you're like over crewing this. You're like, okay, giant cause like in here. I mean, you're probably not going to do it. You're probably just going to use one of your manifest creatures to do that. Regardless, whenever it attacks, exile each creature that crewed this turn. Turn them to battlefield, tap the lowest control at the beginning next end step. So, yeah, again, since you manifest those two creatures, great. Do so. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, I will double crew this because you, of course, can overcrew something. You swing. This is going to say, oh, those go away. They come back face up. And again, you can cheat in some massive things. Speaking of massive, Ugin's Mastery is huge with this kind of a commander. Gym for four. Whenever you cast a colorless creature spell, manifest the top card of your library. So, extra manifesting. That can be great. And again, with our commander in play, instead of them being two twos, they are five fours, which is already just great. Being like, oh, okay, cool. I cast a colorless creature spell. I get a five four in addition to that. Even if you're not flipping that card to get face up, 
That's still huge. On top of that, though, whenever you attack with creatures with total power 6 or greater, which you're already almost there with just one manifested creature, and of course with your commander, you're obviously over that, you may turn a face down creature you control face up. So it kind of helps you get around that, you know, blink effect essentially that you need in saying, hey, okay, let's manifest some more creatures. And then also, let's just, well, attack and flip. And all of a sudden, we can flip some massive things. Of course, you can utilize other manifest effects. Scroll of Fate, I love this card. Three mana artifact, tap, manifest a card from your hand. So again, one of the OG ways to essentially just cheat things into play and then flip it with manifest. So, I mean, you don't have the flip with there, but yeah, you can build around this kind of a concept and say, let's get something face down. Let's flip it eventually. And when we do so, we're getting some spicy, spicy things. Blood Clock. This one, Umbilicus, I think, does the exact same thing, but other, you know, there are similar effects in Colus. Artifact for four at the beginning of each player's upkeep. The player returns a permanent they control back to its owner's hand list. They pay two. Many players out there aren't going to want to do that, so they're going to like, okay, I'll pay two life. I don't want to bounce one of my permanents back to my hand. Keep in mind, yes, there will be certain decks you're playing against. So like, oh, great, I've got ETBs. Okay, yeah, I want to bounce this back to my hand and do it. There is a slight downside to this. There's also an upside to this, but of course, the upside to you, if you want to go about it in this direction, is... Hey, okay, I can just keep playing my commander. Again, I'm going to be ramping a ton. I'm going to get my commander back to my hand. I'm going to play my commander again. I'm going to manifest some more. I'm going to draw some more again. Being able to kind of force your opponents to lose cards in a way. Again, if an opponent just has two cards in their hand, they probably don't want you to turn those two cards into just two, two creatures if they don't have ways to use and abuse them. Like, again, if you're playing against a blink deck, maybe don't choose that player because they can just be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I've got a blink effect. My my Brago is just going to swing and then blink these. And I've got, thank you for helping me cheat on mana on those. But another player who doesn't have things to do with that, you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. Your two cards in your hand are manifested now. And they're like, oh, great. Okay, I don't have a hand anymore. And I've got some two twos. Great. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I got five fours that I've got ways to blink, ways to flip over. And also I get to draw four cards. So yeah, being able to like, kind of like replenish your hand like you kind of can do with the other Kozlex as well. Finding ways to bounce back to your hand can be absolutely massive. Speaking of massive, though, Mirror Battlesphere. This one, sure, you can cheat into play if you really want to with your commander and probably have a way to flip it. That being said, yeah, you can also take advantage of that ETB, like with the blink effects. A 4 7 Mirror Construct that costs 7 enters the battlefield, create 4 1 1 Mirror Artifact Rich Tokens. Top of this, whenever this attacks, taps a Mirror, whatever, deals damage. What matters here is, okay, again, across what, 5 bodies, you have 9 total power normally. But with your commander, you are now making those one ones, which there are four of them, into what, four threes? So that is 16 power across those bodies, plus seven from the main body is 23. Let me know if my math was wrong on that at all. But now for seven mana, or again, manifest plus blink, that's going to be, what, 23 total power? That is a ton of power to be sending out there and just smacking your opponents with. Moving on, Threefold Thunder Hulk. Kind of like another Mirror Battle Sphere, but. It's a gnome, and also it really can really take advantage of your commander's pump effect. A 0, zero ETBs with three counters on it. When it is the battlefield or attacks, create a number of one ones equal to its power. Again, your commander pumps other colorless creatures plus three plus two, making this a six five when it ETBs. So you're going to be making six one ones, which again are going to be four threes. That is an absurd amount of power. So six times four, it's twenty four plus what did I say six again is 30 so 30 power across all those bodies on top of that whenever this attacks you're also getting six more so yeah this can be even be even be better than mere battle sphere and also you can sacrifice artifacts by paying two and get counters on this if you want to get even more but yeah you can really take advantage of that anthem effect from your commander speaking of which this might be a bit risky but graz unstoppable juggernaut can be quite spicy with this deck. A 7-5 Juggernaut. Juggernaut you control attack each combat of Fable. Juggernaut you control can't be blocked by walls. Pretty much irrelevant unless you're playing against a bunch of Arcades and Strategist decks. Other creatures you control have base power kind of is 5-3 and are Juggernauts in addition to other creature types. So again, this is slightly risky because your commander, which is a 9-9, you're turning into a 5-3 that has to attack each combat. That being said, if you've got like ways to blink it, ways to you know bounce it back to your hand, you can kind of prevent that from happening or like other pump effects too to protect it. That being said, or just like indestructibility. That being said, you are turning your entire army into five threes, which your commander is also pumping an extra three two. So they are all going to be eight fives. So again, even if you just have, say, a one one mirror like we talked about earlier, now all of a sudden with this combination of this, as well as your commander, you are going to be having a bunch of eight fives swinging again. And that is an absurd amount of power. A little risky. But again, keep that in mind. And again, keep in mind with these ones I'm talking about. They're like seven, eight, nine, etc. Mana value. Cheating them into play can be really, really beneficial for you 
with your commander. Moving on, you could also go Eldrazi, of course, with this kind of a commander. Ulamog's Crusher, an 8-8 Eldrazi with Annihilator 2 that costs 8 to attack each combat of Fable. It's actually, it's turn of Fable, I should say. Oh, darn, it has to attack. <laughs> so, yeah. It's not my fault I'm swinging at you and you have to sacrifice things because of my Annihilator 2. I have to. Yeah, being able to just swing again and again with this and hit your opponents really hard with, again, 11 damage potentially with this and 11-10 because of that pump with your commander. But also, again, the just decimating force of Annihilator is absolutely huge. Forcing that sacrifice, you can definitely go pretty heavy into Eldrazi Tribal if you want. Phyrexian Triniform. This one is massive. A 9-9 nine, nine for 9. Again, cheat to play with your commander, though, potentially. Flip it, whatever you need to do. Whenever it dies, create three three threes. Um... Yeah, those are artifact uh, color, or sorry, colors, Frexian, golem, artifact, creature tokens. There you go. It's a lot of words right there, but again, they're three threes. But thanks to your commander, they are six fives. So kind of with this one card, which again is a nine nine to start off with, which is a twelve eleven. Thanks to your commander, that is twelve power right there, plus an additional eighteen power across three bodies. Thanks to that pump effect. Once this is actually dealt with, yeah, that's a ton. And on top of that, you can encore this back out of your graveyard. By doing so, you're getting three copies of it that are going to be sacrificed that then give you three of each of those. Math, that's a lot. Goodness gracious. All right, so 12, 36 power with just the three Triniforms when they are swinging with that Encore. When they're sacrificed, you're getting, gosh, what did I say? 18 across three bodies. So that's 18 times three. It's what, 54? Quick math. An absurd amount of power thanks to your Commander's Anthem Effect that I forgot to put on that card again. I'm sorry. Moving on, though, now the pricier picks. Yeah, cards outside of my budget, but might be within yours. Above $1. Conjurer's Clause, it's always going to be above a dollar, I think. I don't think it's ever going to be budget-friendly. I think the closest I ever got was like four or five bucks. Regardless, an artifact for a five man. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature control, then return the card to the battlefield under your control. You think that they should just like... I mean, they've shorthanded so many things these days. You think they should just like blink a creature. We all know what blink is. I guess there's like delayed blink, which is the issue, too, where it's like, okay... Comes back at the end step. And also, some people say, like, Flicker is and Blink are different things, but then, like, they're used interchangeably, and actually Flicker, like, just brings them... I don't know. I think that they could, like, simplify Blink. No? Anyways, being able to Blink for free at your end step, that's huge. Of course, you can use and abuse ETBs, like, say, Aegmir Battlesphere. But also, of course, with this commander, you manifest giant things. And then you're like, oh, it's just a little tutu. Now it's not. Now it flips the front side, and it's absolutely huge. And also, if I need to be, you get that, too. Moving on, Erratic Portal. Artifact 4-4. Four, four. Pay 1, tap, return to our creature, disarm hand list, and scroll pays 1. I mean, if someone's tapped out, sure, you can just be like, all right, um, put that back in your hand. Yay. Uh, but more so with this kind of a commander, you're going to be using it on yourself. You're going to be saying, okay, I've got my commander in play, which, again, has, an, has a cast trigger that I want to use and abuse so I can draw a good amount of cards with it and manifest more and more and force manifest my opponents as well. Yeah, uh, I choose not to pay the one. I will blink, or I will bounce. I will bounce my commander, not blink my commander. Moving on. Ulamog the Infinite, Geyer, a 10-10 Eldrazi for 11 mana. We cast a spell to destroy target permanent, indestructible, Annihilator 4. Also, the Shuffle Titan thing. So this, yes, is something that you... Again, it costs 11 mana. Being able to cheat on that is massive. Being able to say, okay, I manifest this little 2-2, and your opponent's like, oh, it's cute. Oh, wait, no, it's a 5-4. It's still not cute. And then you, flip, you blink it, and you're like, oh, really not cute. 10-10. You are passing up on the cast trigger when you are doing that, obviously, which is unfortunate, but it's still worth it to have a 10-10 Indestructible Annihilator 4, which actually is a 13-12, right, thanks to your commander. So, yeah, that's going to be worth it, and you're going to be fine. Speaking of worth it, Blightsteel Colossus. Gross. Yeah, this is kind of kind of gross. Um, very gross. <laughs> An 11-11, Trample Infect, Indestructible Golem. That costs 12 mana. Again, like it, not Shuffle Titan, but it shuffles itself back when it hits the graveyard. This is, uh, again, would be a 14-13. So your opponents have to block even better, or they're getting taken out in one shot thanks to that Trample and Infect. Indestructible. Again, 12 mana is a good amount. You still have a lot of ways to ramp again, so you can kind of take advantage of these cards, even if you're not manifesting them with your commander, because you're going to be ramping a lot for this kind of a commander. That being said, manifest this, and then blink it, and then your opponent's like, oh no. This is one of those like, game-ending ones where you kind of just maybe have this in play. You don't blink it on your turn. You like keep your Voyager staff ready to go, and then right before your turn hits, that opponent's like, okay, I'm going to pass it there, and you're like, wait one second. I will uh, blink this little 2-2, two -two, which actually is a 5-4 with my commander play. They're like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's White Seal Colossus. Oh, I don't have enough blockers. Oh, I'm gone. One-shot KO. Moving on. It the betrays again. 
yes, Eldrazi Tribal can definitely be a thing with this kind of a commander. If that betrays, is an amazing card, even if you're not going Eldrazi. An 11 of Eldrazi that costs 12 mana, Annihilator 2. Whenever opponent sacrifices a non token permanent, you get to steal that, put it into play under your control. So, with this kind of a card, the more Eldrazi you have, pretty much, the more Annihilator effects you have. There's some other ones we'll talk about here in a second. The better. The better. This is a crazy good card that can really easily win you the game. Mere Incubator. This one's a fun one. <laughs> this one I wish was budget friendly because there's some weird things you can do with it. An artifact for a six, pay six, tap, sacrifice it, search life for any number of artifact cards, remove them from the game, then put that many one ones into play, then shelf your library. Mere one one, mere artifact constructions, I should say. So they are colorless creatures, meaning that instead of making a bunch of one ones, you're making a bunch of four threes. So essentially, you go through your library, and let's say you have 40 artifacts in there or whatever it is, you get rid of all of them. It is a risky play, yes, but you're probably gonna be doing this like right before your turn. So most players don't have a wrath that is instant speed typically. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I just made 160 power out of nowhere. 40 power across four bodies, or four power across 40 bodies. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I swing and win. Yeah, you definitely can take opponents out. With something like this, with a commander that, again, has a massive Anthem effect. I mean, picture this, plus your commander, plus Graz, the uh, the one that gives them, uh, what, makes them into Juggernauts that are five threes as well. So the eight power. Have fun. Regardless, finally, Portal to fight Rexia. Actually, not finally. I think I have one more card. Never mind. Portal of Rexia, an artifact for nine. Enters the battlefield. Each one sacrifices three creatures. Beginning of your upkeep, a target creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield to control. It's a for Rexia and other types. This one is quite nice, quite spicy, and keep in mind... We talked about like those other like big spells that are you know cast trigger requirements so you don't get to take advantage of them when you blink them you can still take advantage of this one though even though like it's not a creature like again it's a creature and say two two face down manifest creature your opponent's like oh it's a cute little creature it's just a five four cool then you have a blink effect you blink it it flips and all of a sudden your opponents are sacrificing a lot of things. Again, three creatures each, nine creatures in total, most likely, if everyone has creatures. And then you say, oh, I get to cheat things that apply to your graveyard now, too. All the cheating, all the value. This is pretty spicy. Speaking of spicy, very simple, very effective. Skittery Invasion, seven mana. Make five zero ones that you can sacrifice for mana. Typically, again, you just be like, okay, cool. I've got, like, some blockers. I've got some, you know, mana sources if I need. It's kind of like a ritual effect in a way. But also with this kind of a commander, you're like, oh, okay, actually, you know what? They're three threes. They're actually three threes. So I got, what, 15 power across five bodies for seven mana? That's pretty good. I could all sacrifice for mana if I need to. Just keep in mind, like, all these different ways to make a bunch of creatures go wide, go tall with this kind of a commander, do some spicy things. But now this episode is coming to a close. I want to apologize one more time. Maybe, okay, future Mitch. Yes. Uh, please, if you can remember to do so, edit the card so it actually has that as well on it so, so it shows up properly, okay? All right? Cool. All right, will do. Anyways, uh, make sure you take everything I said with a grain of salt. Spoiler season starts tomorrow. We'll see if some of these are real, if all of them are real, and how many spoilers are left, I guess, then, if that's the case. So we shall see. Again, if you are interested in the new cause like the broken reality and you want to proxy it, well, ask your playgroup first. And then, yeah, go ahead and build your deck around if they're okay with that. Great. And if they're okay, I mean, double again, double check to make sure that they're like, oh, okay. Well, it turned out to be not be real, so you can't play that anymore. Ask if you can still play it beforehand, okay? Or wait until it actually gets spoiled, and then you're like, okay, now I'll buy those cards or whatever, okay? Make sure you check out that card with this link in the description below. Stay tuned to this channel for more exciting quick takes, spoilers, leaks, whatever. And, of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.